Lansing heading now out to Michigan State University. Looking pretty good there in East Lansing today. Uh, we're going to be heading out there today to get you ready for the solar eclipse that is happening exactly two weeks from today. A lot of stuff going on on a Monday afternoon and good afternoon to you. I'm Christy McDonald. Thanks so much for joining us. It is the Daily Plus Live and you are watching us only on Local 4 Plus and click on Detroit.com. I hope you had a great weekend starting the week off fresh. A lot of people are on spring break rolling into Easter is uh, on Sunday as well. So good week for everyone. But we are going to start off today with eyes to the sky because it exactly two weeks from today is that solar eclipse that will put a large part of North America into darkness and it's going to be just before two o'clock in the afternoon here in Michigan. Now most of Michigan will not be in the totality area of it but a small sliver of Monroe County will be. All right so let's head now to Michigan State University. With me now is Shannon Schmoll. She's the director of the Abrams Planetarium. Shannon it's great to see you. Thanks for being with me. Thanks for having me. All right, so many people are interested in it. It's, it's something that gets very exciting. What is so special about this eclipse here for 2024? So it's not all the time that we get to see a solar eclipse where the moon appears to cover the sun. And because you have to be in that path of totality, uh, you have to be in the right place at the right time. And so getting to one, uh, you often have to travel. So to have one in, in our own uh, backyard in a way is is really uh, exciting to be able to to go see this this event. All right, Shannon. So we know that the path is stretching across the country right now. So where will it, I think, last the longest or what's going to be the most interesting stretch? So the uh, path of totality itself is about 100 miles wide or so. And so if you want to be somewhere along that center line, that's going to give you the longest eclipse, uh, which will be around four to four and a half minutes. I think the longest uh, spot is four minutes, 28 seconds in Mexico. Uh, but generally along that center line, you're going to get the longest eclipse. But as long as you are somewhere in that path of totality, you will get to see uh, at least a, a little bit of it. All right, so explain for us, um, again, giving us a little bit of the one-on-one, -on -one, what does the path of totality mean? So as the... Uh the, during a total solar eclipse, the moon gets lined up uh, perfectly with the with the Earth and the sun so that it will block the sun. And so as it does that, the uh, moon casts a shadow onto the Earth. So as the moon continues to move in its orbit and the Earth rotates, that shadow will move across the Earth. And so where that shadow is, is the path of totality. Now, uh, and the shadow it casts has a darker part of the shadow, which we call the umbra. And then there's a penumbra, which is the lighter part of a shadow. And so the path of totality specifically is the path of that umbra, the darkest part. Now, outside of that, in the path of the penumbra, you will still see a partial solar eclipse and not a total solar eclipse. So when we look at that sliver of Monroe County and, of course, also people looking south into you know, Toledo, Cleveland area, um, we know that that will get the, the either in the path of totality. But what can we expect in other parts of Michigan? So in other parts of Michigan, we will see it as a partial. So the moon will never completely cover the sun. So instead, we will see a sliver, a, a crescent shape of the sun at maximum eclipse. So it won't completely cover it, but we will uh, see it'll it'll feel a little different, a little eerie. You might notice a, a little less light, but there's still quite a bit of sunlight that comes out of that sliver. And exactly the percentage of coverage depends on where you are. So I think Detroit Detroit is about 99.1%, which is like a really near totality. Um, mm -hmm. Where I am in East Lansing, we're about 97%. And like up in Sault Ste. Marie and a large part of the UP, it's going to be around 84%. All right, so explain to us what the best way to experience this. If we're here in the Detroit area, how should we get ready for it? And um, I guess, you know, prepare in terms of timeline. Uh, so double check the exact times for your location. Uh, Timeanddate.com is a really, really great website that will give you exact times for whatever your location is. And you also want to prepare uh, safety wise. So even at 99% coverage of the sun, there is enough sunlight 
that you could see that will harm your eyes. And so you want to make sure you have something like eclipse glasses, uh, which I, I see you showing there right there, and mm -hmm. look for those ISO requirements right there to make sure that they are accurate. Uh, and so uh, what you want to also look for and double check is make sure that there's no scratches or holes in your glasses. Uh, make sure that they truly are up to, to that standard. So look up at the sky away from the sun and make sure you can't see any clouds or anything else through those glasses. The only thing you should be able to see is the sun. You can also make indirect viewers. So you project an image of the sun. There's great things online on how to make a cereal box eclipse viewer or really anything with small holes in it. You can sort of hold out and look at the image it projects onto the ground. So a Ritz cracker, a colander, um, even a card with you and you punch a hole into it. Those are all great ways to make indirect viewers of the sun. Oh my gosh, a Ritz cracker. This I've got to see. <laughs> this is going to be a great yeah. way. Talk to me a little bit about, I, I mean, um, we've also heard there's going to be viewing parties at planetariums around the state as well. What are you guys doing in East Lansing? So we are, we, a lot of our staff are traveling to totality. So uh, we, we are not planning any particular events at our planetarium. Uh, we are encouraging people to travel if they can. And if they can't, as long as they are outside and have a view of the sun, they'll be able to see it. So just get your eclipse glasses ready so that you can go see that. Uh, and I plan on probably going um, live on our social media at different part uh, at different times during the entire event in order to talk about what we're seeing, try out the Ritz cracker uh, thing <laughs> as well. So we'll we'll be. Um, We'll have an online presence during that. Yeah, I think what's so exciting, Shannon, is, is it gets people um, talking about maybe science in a different way or getting them engaged in maybe areas that they never have been before. Absolutely, I, I think uh, this is this is. One of these things that we don't get to see very often, it is incredibly amazing and beautiful to see the way that all of the different bodies in our solar system interact with one another. And there's these really fun, simple experiments that you can do. And uh, aside from needing eclipse glasses, uh, you don't need a fancy telescope in order to see this event. Uh, and that's what makes it really great is you, you get to go outside and, and see this wonderful experience um, in, in your own backyard, really. Yeah, and we'll keep checking in with you on this. It's great that you're going to be online and doing some uh, live updates throughout the whole thing. Shannon Schmoll, again, the director of the Abrams Planetarium at uh, Michigan State University. It's great to see you. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. All right, a little Eclipse 101 for everyone. Two weeks from today.